Lindsay here at The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this wine bottle topper. Now you probably remember this one that I did on a video a couple months ago um, with these hand painted wine glasses that match. But this one's got a tissue in it so you can see. And um, actually I uh, sold both of these sets. However, I didn't finish painting them. So since um, they're like needed for Christmas and today is uh, December 22nd. I was trying to think, what month is it? December 22nd. I'm like, oh, I better get on the stick here and get this painted. So here's the back of one painted and I wanted it to be kind of um oh you know versatile oh by the way this template is available from the drunken woodworker and I'll put a link below to his shop so you can go buy that if you want he's also a youtuber and just fantastic if you like to do um woodworking tutorials anyway um so we're just going to paint this grape leaf and grapes on here and it's going to be all kinds of fun uh so what I've got here is just some basic acrylic paints and my brushes are in a water bucket over here I'm very uh, I'm very kind of like woo Christmas you know did you get that way? <laughs> okay, I'm going to start by, um, I think I'm going to start by doing the grapes, actually. I started with a leaf last time, but I think this is a better choice. And I've got some magenta, and I've got some ultramarine blue, just mixing it together on my palette. And what I'm going to do is just do these kind of twisty grapes. See, I'm just putting my brush down, twisting. <clears throat> Here's a little, I'm sorry, have I, I just ate my lunch, I've got a little froggy throat. Froggy throat? Um, this is my dye ink refresher, which is just water and glycerin, and if I give my paints a little spritz um, with that, it really keeps them moist. I started using a space heater in my studio, so everyone can stop feeling sorry for me in my uh, cold state of affairs here. Um, but it, but I make but it really dries my acrylic paint out. So I've mixed, you know, my blue and my magenta colorish here. Colorish? That's not a word. I'm usually so poised. <laughs> but today I'm like, ah, Christmas! <laughs> I gotta get it done! Well, you people with dogs are probably like, my dog is going crazy listening to you. High-pitched craziness. Um, so I'm just putting in a bunch of these darker ones. Obviously. <laughs> so those of you that said you really like my unedited videos, <laughs> you're probably thinking, oh my gosh. What was I thinking telling her that? All right. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of uh, wipe my brush off and dip into just the magenta on its own and I'm going to paint a few of those. Um, if you're interested in how I primed and sponge painted the background of this, I'll put a link below to the um, wine bottle topper in wine bottle wine glasses, wine bottle glasses, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> in the video description so you can check those tutorials out too. Just a really great last minute um, hostess gift or um, probably by the time I get this video actually uploaded and scheduled it'll be after Christmas but it'll you know just a good last minute gift idea type thing it might be before Christmas who knows who can say I don't know I'm just kind of a random random person right now random person I don't know I'm very random in my speaking but you know this is going up I think this is going to be published regardless of how crazy I sound because um, this is my only other one I have to do and I'm not doing this again if I don't have to. Alright so now I'm going to take a little yellow ochre which is kind of like that grape upon color and mix it in just kind of my brush is dirty with the, with the magenta I'm just picking up the yellow ochre and I'm going to do some some grapes in that color and I'm going to overlap some of the other ones and I'm just going to pick up more yellow ochre as I go so my grapes will get a little more golden. Golden grapes. And you, so you can like give a really nice bottle of wine with one of these toppers. The, uh, the Drunken Woodworker actually makes them out of nicer woods. And then they're just pretty enough the way they are. But I had my husband cut this out of some masonite, which is like a thin, you can see it's kind of just a thin like dark brown hardboard. And then I sponge painted over um, with yellow ochre, white and uh, brown after priming it. And I just, I kind of just wanted to surface to paint. I can't. I can't bring myself to paint on nice wood because it's already nice looking and I'm better at rescuing things. If I get like a brand new something to paint on, I have a hard time with that. But if I'm like, if I find something on the side of the road for free or, you know, from the junk shop, I have no problem painting on that. I don't know if anybody else is like that. I like to rescue items, I guess. Okay, so there we go. We're going to leave those grapes be. I think I got enough grapes there. And um, uh, we're going to paint the grape leaf. And, um, you know, I'm using a quarter inch angle brush for most of my stuff here. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some, and I'm just loading up my brush all the way. I'm going to get the tip of it in some chrome oxide green, which is also like a sap green, but for some reason 
I noticed with acrylic paint, they usually don't call it sap green. I don't know why that is, but that chrome oxide is very close to sap green. And I'm just going to look at my little leafy there. Actually, I'm going to prop it up where I can see it. I was uh, watching some Netflix while I was painting earlier. <laughs> I can do that now because then you'd hear the Netflix and I'd probably get like, you know, some copyright <laughs> violation thing. Um, plus, uh, you know, there's a limit to my multitasking. So I'm just going to paint on a leaf. These leaves, so oh, the cat just sneezed. Bless you, kitty cat. Um, so these leaves are kind of just leafy and they got some pointy, they got like five pointy sections here. I'm going to have to, I'm just going to fill that in a little bit. I'm going to be adding some other colors, so I'm not like, you know, going to try to keep it one stroke or anything. Um, going in, I'm loading up with the yellow ochre again, tipping it in the, in the chrome. And let's see, I need, I need one kind of overlapping my little uh, grapey poos there. Grapey poos. And I had two more leaves, so again, my yellow ochre in my chrome green. Let's get this one over here. That's why I put the grapes on first. On my other one I didn't. I did the leaf first and I felt like I was just kind of like I had to put my grapes around my leaf and I didn't really like that. So I like to work kind of from the bottom up when I'm working in acrylics. You hear that cat sneeze again? I'm allergic to something down here. It's probably all the wood dust from my husband's workshop that's across the way. We've all been very busy getting ready for Christmas. Lots of woodworking, lots of painting, lots of good stuff. And this isn't um, a present for anybody I know, so I'm safe to post that before Christmas if I get around to it. I'm trying to, uh, well, trying to, I have actually, um, put a lot of videos together over the last couple of weeks to give me a little bit of a Christmas break. There we go. Okay, so now um, that's kind of just blah. So I want to add some other colors in there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of wipe... Well, I will. I do have a lot of green on there. I'm just going to rinse it off. And I'm going to grab some of that magenta. Now, I like to use the same colors over and over again um, on my painting. And I'm going to add some of that here and there in my leaf. So it kind of has that little bit of a, maybe like a turning season leaf coloring. My paint is drying really fast on me. So I'm going to have to bring some more color in to blend with. There we go. My tummy's making gurgly noises because I just had lunch. I should have filmed this before I stopped for lunch, but my um, my furnace was running, so it was kind of loud. So I thought I would have lunch and come back and do that. There you go, a little bit about my life today. I'm adding, just, I'm just kind of going until I feel like I've got enough colors in there and it's got enough contrast away from the grapes and away from the... Um, the surface. I need a little more yellow ochre. So I'm using um, just two paints. This is M. Graham. That's who I really like the watercolors from. I also have some Liquitex paints there. I just kind of, I, I really don't find as much of a difference between um, acrylics and oils as I do watercolors. Maybe that's just because I'm more of a watercolorist, so I'm a little more picky about watercolor paints, but I find that acrylics are, I mean tube acrylics, I, I mean artist acrylics, all artist acrylics are, are pretty good. You know, the craft ones, there is a big difference between some of the craft brands, and usually you can tell what the difference is going to be by what you spend on them. Not always, but a lot of the times you can. I added a little bit of that permanent green light. I had some of that on my palette. I don't think I used, I don't know if I used it on the other one. I think I did. I don't know. I felt like it needed a little bit of brightening up. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of, you know, dabbing and painting. So I'm pretty much all wrapped for Christmas. I actually did go out yesterday, a Sunday before Christmas, and I uh, did a little shopping, and I was kind of afraid to, because um, I'm like, oh, it's going to be so busy. But there are a few things I needed to get in town, and a couple places I wanted to go were having some pretty good sales. And, you know, it wasn't crazy. It was pretty good. I was... Everyone was pleasant. I think people were realizing that, yeah, it's a couple days through Christmas before Christmas. So, you know, just gotta, just gotta deal with it. All right. I think that I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to this round one. It's a number three round Windsor and Newton's uh, Regency Gold. And I'm going to use a little bit of brown, burnt umber. 
I might grab a little bit of that yellow ochre in there just to tone it down a little bit. And I do find that, you know, because I do have the space, the space heater's not on right now because it's a little noisy, but um, I do find that that, you know, it is drying out my, my paint, so I have to work kind of quickly. And I have to work kind of quickly because, like, this was due, I don't know, a month ago. And I <laughs> emailed the person who uh, asked if she could buy it um, this weekend, and I said, uh, you still want that? Because if you don't, that's fine. If you do, that's great, you know whatever I didn't want to make her feel ob obligated and I didn't want to do the painting if I you know right away if if uh, she wasn't interested because I had like you know like everybody a ton of things to do right before Christmas but she's like oh if, you, if it's a problem I still want it so I'm like all right absolutely I said I'd do it I'm doing it I'm a woman of my word all right I'm taking a little of that burnt umber and I'm adding some water to it and I'm just going to put some veins in the leaves there we go Okay, and um, let's see, I think I'm gonna paint the branch on so we can give that a little bit of a chance to dry. Um, I think I'm gonna go back to that ang quarter inch angular brush. You know, you can really use whatever you like. Um, use round if you prefer it. I'm gonna grab some burnt umber and I'm gonna grab a little yellow ochre on there too. And I'm gonna put branch, I'm gonna start it right there. That's kind of going down to that cluster of grapes and I like an angular angular just because um, when I'm doing a branch I can twist and roll my brush as I go and get like a really natural look see that and if I add like that second color on there and get a little highlight too I can go back and add that a little bit of a yellow ochre highlight and we'll be adding more highlights so not a big not a you know you can always go back in with a another brush and I want to give the little cluster of grapes some stems but I am going to switch brushes I'm going to go back to that number three actually I was going to do it this weekend I just heard back from the lady this morning um, but my daughter and I think she was just kind of like I need to get away from you people she had she had taken over my um my studio she had a pretty big project due and um and she was using my studio pretty much the entire weekend if she wasn't busy you know at a party or something she was working in my studio so I just kind of let her let her be with it I had other projects to do elsewhere in the house so um, so it worked out all right but I was glad to get back to my studio I kind of miss it if I haven't been working it too much all right I'm gonna take a little bit more of that magenta I'm not quite happy with the leaves I just feel like it needs a little bit of that in there to spark it a little give a little bit of a spark here in there Okay, now I want to put some little curly cues, little vines on there, and I'm going to do that with a long bristled round liner, which I know is around here because I obviously used it in that one. Uh, here we go. Well, it's not even that long bristled. It's a um, just a small size 10 over 10 over zero sapphire, Robert Simmons, and I'm going to use a watered down mix. Just don't, not even a mix, just watered down burnt umber. And hold your brush straight up and down when you do this. And you're just gonna kind of draw with it like that. I find holding the brush up and down keeps it um, nice and fine tipped. You can just do squiggly lines. Try not to go overboard. It's really easy to go overboard with this, and I often go overboard with it. But, you know, do as I say, not as I do. I'll probably go overboard with it, because that is what Linny do. Well, not to Z Frank there. <laughs> Have you guys seen the uh, deer kitten? <laughs> I love that. Oh, my gosh. I saw that before, um, before we got our cats, and I have to say that slightly influenced me to, uh, to get a cat. <laughs> that is so funny. All right, so now we're gonna do some highlights on our grapes. Since the grapes are dry, we're gonna kind of leave that, leave the rest of it be while it dries. And we're going back. We're yeah, we're gonna go back to that. Like I like questioning myself. That quarter inch flat. Okay, so it's cleanish, mostly clean, clean enough. Um, rinse it off, blot it off on one side so it's still damp. Then I'm gonna take the tip of that brush. I am going to um, actually, you know what? I gotta mix a little yellow ochre and white together so I get a very soft yellow almost like a um, butter butter yellow uh, here I'll have it all on my brush you can see it it's this color right here it's not well it looks kind of white there now when I have it like that maybe I'll put it this white 
Okay, this is my Q-tip box. See how it's not quite white? It's kind of cream color. Okay, yes, yeah, so I buy my Q-tips at the dollar store. <laughs> that fine assured brand of Q-tips. Oh, actually, they're perfect for in the studio work. Not so hot for sticking in your ears because sometimes little fuzzy parts come off and then you're stuck with fuzzies in your ear or you get slightly horrified what's in my ear. All right, and I'm just going to go on the edges. Okay, don't worry. We're going to soften it. Okay, but before it dries, so grab yourself a Q-tip, a fine Q-tip, and then just soften it a little bit. I'm going to wet that a little bit. I just want to kind of give it that haze. And actually, I'm going to wipe off my brush a little bit because I think if I don't have quite so much on there, I'll just be able to do it right the first time. There. And it's going to dry a little bit less opaque because it's, uh, because that's just kind of what happens. I don't know the science, people! What do I look like? A chemistry professor? Let's go back in and just soften where needed with a wet, wettish, dampish Q-tip. It's sued by the Q-tip people for calling these Q-tips cotton swabs. All right, then I'm going to go in with my round, small, this little round brush and just put some little dots of white. Just give it a little bit of a high highlight here and there. We'll make it sparkle. I think the background that I painted is very forgiving. It's just like the shades of gold. It uh, really covers up mistakes really easily. Okay, so we're doing the same thing on the leaves. I'm just going to add in a little bit of that creamy color highlight. And then I'm just going to smear it out. In fact, I think I'll just go back to that other brush that's damp and I can just kind of Soften the edges like that. And that's really all there is to painting these. I do hope you try it. Feel free to pause it. Take your time. Enjoy it. Painting is fun. So make sure you really enjoy the process. Just a little bit of a white highlight on some of the branch here just to help it pop away from the background a little bit. That's why it's so flattering because the background is so close to the other shades we're using that if you make a mistake, it doesn't really show that much. So that's, you know, that's a little tip for you there. And, uh, you know, just tweak it a little bit and you'll be all set. Sign your name when you're done. And um, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. Tell your friends. Share it on Pinterest and Twitter and Facebook I love, or your blogs. I love it when you guys share. That really means the world to me. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.